And we're back today with the top 25 point guards, the hardest position to rank. If you don't have a top 25 point guard, you are not a contender in this league. Yeah, I mean, the point guard position, it sucked for a lot of players because there was a few times where we talked about some players who missed it, but this list definitely had the most amount of really good players who missed it. Um, ranking it, I mean, one through, I felt like 40 was just the largest challenge. Even you get through a couple um, and then you just don't know where to go. I think myself, I got to seven or eight, and then I actually had to start ranking backwards, like down up, just because that position in between was so hard for me that I needed to kind of talk, knock off some of the bottom guys before I could even figure out that middle of the pack. It was super I fun. couldn't even get that top seven figured out they got the top two figured out and then it was a blur so no it's definitely very difficult but uh, a lot of good players in the point guard makes sense you need you need a leader on your team the point guard is usually the leader definitely but we'll go right into it we're going to start 25 who do we have at the okay. spot there today at number 25 we have someone who well i guess he hasn't really had have the chance to show he's a leader because his team's not that good uh kobe white he's Good up-and-coming player. Um, I'm actually surprised to see him make the list, to be honest. We had a lot of good players that didn't make this list. But I guess he'll have a... You're looking for a breakout year? Yeah, I mean, he's a guy who, uh, when we look at some of the other guys later in the list, who maybe just missed out, um, some of it maybe comes down to things like playing time and the fact they are getting older, versus Kobe White, clearly, like you said, a guy uh, who I expect to be on the rise, definitely. Uh, he is the main point guard in Chicago. Obviously, Zach Levine handles the ball sometimes as well, but he does start in the shooting guard position. Kobe White is going to get the starting minutes. We saw him get them post All-Star last year, um, and he really did shine. I mean, um, in 10, 10 games played post All-Star break, he had almost 25 points per game, um, and he was doing good in the other areas of the game as well, too. Um, so obviously, it was a guy similar to Colin Sexton we spoke about, who the latter half of the year, um, he did what the team drafted him to do. That's obviously to put the ball in the net and obviously make the guys around him better. Um, so if he could do it for the whole year, I know it's going to be a top 25 justified spot. Will he put up 25 games for the whole year? Absolutely not. But could he go 16 or 15, four, four assists, five assists, and he's a decent rebounder too? Absolutely. And will that Chicago team be better because of it? I think so too. I think Theo will be pretty good with him as a starter, actually. He could even be a potential most improved candidate. It, to me, it all depends. Like he, he wasn't even a starter on his team last year. Um, he only started one game. To me, it all depends if Chicago wins. They have to win with him at the helm. To me, that team... Looking at all the improvements around the NBA compared to all the, the lower-ranked teams that we had last year, I don't see Chicago. I don't see. I didn't see Chicago make any big moves. I guess they're kind of hoping for Otto Porter Jr. to come back, be healthy, and then that team to click at one year older. But I just don't see them being a contender for a playoff spot. And without that happening, that's why he wasn't in my top twenty-five personally. I'm a little bit lower. I didn't have him in my top 30, to be honest. But you're right. He does have the potential. To me, he kind of looks in the, the mold of like a Malcolm Brogdon, Eric Bledsoe, kind of that that player where on a winning team is really, really important and you need it as your second or third star. But uh, you're right. I, I could be completely wrong, and he could be a most improved candidate. He could jump up 20 points per game. But until until he does that, I think we have such a deep – pool of players at, at this position that he, uh, unless he gets up the, to uh, the 20, he's not going to crack the top 20. Yeah, I mean, top 20 definitely depends because it is so deep. Um, we're going to see a lot of good guys who they're not even, who are a lot better than Kobe White at this part in secure, who even are just right above them in just a couple yeah. of spots. Um, like I said, I expect maybe like a 16, um, kind of a, or kind of year 16, 4, 16, 5 um, for Kobe White. And I think that'll be enough to justify the ranking. Um, I don't know if they'll make the playoffs this year, but I think they'll be a bit better. Um, and to say, like, they definitely have a shot. They do have a talented starting five there. Um, they obviously have um, a good rookie off the bench to Patrick Robinson. Um, but anytime I think a rookie could come in, they put up on, they put up just over 13 per game. They do shine, um, like I said, in 36 minutes per game after the All-Star break. Um, it shows a lot of promise. So I think in a sophomore year, he will take a nice jump. Um, could be wrong, like you said, might have a sophomore slump. Um, but either way, I think for the long term, he is going to be their starting point guard. So even if it's not this year, I think we'll see him in the top 25, um, definitely for years to come as well. Yeah. 
I hope so for that team because I, I just hope that they can get out of that hole where they kind of have played themselves in for the last couple of years, ever since Derek Rose's prime. Um, moving on from Kobe White there, uh, we actually, if we move forward uh, a position or a ranking, we do not have Derek Rose. Um, we have the, the DeJounte Murray. And the reason why I say that is because we actually had a three-way tie for this next spot. This next spot. We actually had a three-way tie between Murray, Bledsoe, and Rose. And the way our tiebreaker went down, this actually put DeJounte Murray at the 24th spot. And before I start talking about DeJounte Murray, I have really great things to say about DeJounte Murray. I want to know why you had him at, let me look down your list, you had him 37th. Uh, that's what I want to know. He still cracked a top 24 or top 25 be, because clearly I, I have a very high mind of him. I'm very high on him. But why is he your 37th best point guard? Yeah, I mean, I would. Seventh. Yeah, I mean, I'd have to look at the list to see who specifically is ahead of him in, in my list. But ultimately, it is just a super deep position. And it comes down to the fact that even though he's a decent point guard, I think he's pretty topped out in terms of his point production, the things he's going to do. Um, I don't think there's going to be much more room for improvement. Um, and because of that, I mean, everyone else ahead of him, they are more productive on in the regard, at least offensively. Defensively, he is a good player as well. But when a guy is one of the worst um, field goal players in the, uh, field, sorry, when a guy does have the fewest points per game of any point guard with 25 minutes per game, clearly he is struggling to score at the NBA level. He played 25 minutes. Yeah, but he doesn't it, need to score. He's not in a position to score. He that's, doesn't need to score. Okay, but no, technically no point guard does, and all of them do. The guys, again, who are ahead of him, well, even from, a guy. From what I've seen is that you rank offensive production well, on a way higher tier than defensive production. There's no reason why DeJounte Murray would, should be anywhere close to 10 spots under Kobe White. You have about 15 spots under Kobe White. That's... I, I mean, that's definitely... That's incredible. That's, incredible. That's definitely completely unfair to say based on the fact that Derek White made my list based uh, on the that, fact that he is one of the best defensive players uh, in the league already and a much and a better defensive player than... No, not, not that... Then and not, no, no, no. He was in the exact same position. No, no. Dante Murray is a higher, better player than White. He's... Dante Murray is a better defensive player. He's definitely not. I mean, if you look at it, in terms of shooting guards last year, Derek White was third in terms of defensive production behind only Danny Green and Drew Holiday. He's already up there with the top guys. DeJounte Murray isn't. He's good at... DeJounte Murray. He's, he's not a bad defensive player, but to say that he... To say that someone doesn't value defense because of one guy they feel like isn't a better point guard than guys like Alonzo Ball, who are also very good on the defensive end, is definitely not fair to say. You've had the same opinion of a guy like Derek White, where you said, oh, it's because his offense isn't good, where he's great on the defensive end too. Like, you can't sit there and say that. That's just completely... No, I, 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 see, I see a big a breakout year for DeJounte Murray. I see him in their top 15, to be honest. I see him blowing past a lot of these people. And I definitely... I, he's a kind of guy who hasn't scored because he doesn't need to score. Um, but they're going to get rid of DeMar DeRozan this year, probably Aldridge. One of those two players can open up a lot of minutes for him. He is, to me, he's a great, great player. Uh, I think that he is going to be really, really up there in this league. I, I see him in a very... It's hard to say what kind of mold he's in, but uh, he's, like I say, I have nothing but good things to say about him. And I, I guess we have very various opinions on this, and I'm very happy he made our list. Hey, I mean, he also made the list uh, based on the fact that I was leading a tiebreaker and said based on the improvements he made, um, he definitely deserves to make it. Like, he did have a big improvement from year over to year, but do I think based on the other guys who are on the list, uh, he's better than a lot of the guys who missed it as well? No, I definitely don't. And I don't think he's going to have a better better year. Um, and Don Jante Murray, I think he's a guy who's going to take six, seven years to fully hit his kind of full potential versus other guys are completely ready right now. Um, I don't see that. I see him next year making a big jump. Hey, I mean, it's definitely possible. I just don't think that he's going to be there. I also think that um, if the Spurs are looking to make trades, I think he's a much more 
I think they're much more willing to trade DeJounte Murray than they are Derek White as well. Um, Derek White can play both shooting guard and point guard. DeJounte Murray is strictly a point guard. Um, so, I mean, I think he's much more expendable. Um, and I think that also speaks to the fact that he's not maybe as valuable as you're kind of giving him up to be. Um, I mean, in terms of guys who finished ahead of him, um, like in on my list, it's again, it's personal yeah. preference, but I mean, Dennis Schroeder obviously finishes ahead of him. Alfred Payton is already, I would say they're very similar players, but Alfred Payton is a much better passer already than Shante Murray. Everything else other than that Murray had a better year this year in terms of shooting, but he has his first two years were basically uh, the same as um, Deshante Murray. Patrick Beverly I had over him. Monte Morris, I think, is the best backup part right in the league. Um, Reggie Jackson. Backup. Reggie Jackson, yeah. Oh, Reggie Jackson's not even playing next year. Yeah, but Reggie Jackson was a guy who had 17 per game, and he has been a starting point guard, and he has been a pretty good starting point guard. Yeah, but he's, he's yes. not even going to get minutes next year. We don't like, know. He's, he's still got he's minutes. Third on the, he's third on the depth chart. We don't know. Bet, I bet really away on a whole other level, unless there's an injury happening. Hey, that's it. But that's just it. Those are a Injury. couple of guys that I just had ahead of them. And I feel like those. it's not a huge deal to feel like those guys are better than them, honestly. Because if you look at the production, it was very similar last year. And we don't know what they're going to do. They're all very good players in their own right. I'm not saying DeJounte Murray is a bad player. I just don't think he's better than any of, any of those guys. And I don't think this year will be different. I, I think that he's going to have a big breakout year this year. Um, I think there's a reason why um, someone like Sports Illustrated had him in their top 80. I think they had him. I'd have to check where they had him, um, but uh, there's a good reasoning for that. I think he deserves to be even higher than where he's at right now. But I, like I say, I'm just happy to him for him to make the list, and I love that we're recording this because I want to come back at the end of the year and be like, hmm, Dejounte Murray. Okay. So, but either way, moving on from Dejounte Murray, um, we have here at number 23. Um, again, there was a three-way tie between Murray, Bledsoe, and Rose. Right now, the way our tiebreaker went down, we would have Derek Rose coming in at number 23. Yeah, so Derek Rose, he's a obviously... player. Yeah, I mean, he's a guy who seemed like, obviously, um, everyone knows that he seemed done at a point in his career. Um, and then he really had his resurgence with New York and has just not seemed to fall off since. Um, I would say the only thing for him that he can't be higher is that he does seem to kind of have plateaued at um, his production, whatever it is right now with Minnesota, um, as well as obviously, um, Detroit. yeah, as well as going into Detroit now. Um, being an 18 point per game guy, as well as being one of the better passers in the league, still very quick on the defensive end, nothing to be shy about. But again, because there's so many other good players on this list, I just don't see him improving much um, from his last year either. If I had to rank him last year versus the guys this year, I'd rank him about in the same spot. Yeah, no, I can completely agree. To be honest, I think actually last year over the year, he regressed as a player. I don't think that's a good sign for him. Um, I actually had him a couple of spots lower, but right around the same kind of area. Um, that being said, like he has been consistent at the 18 point per game level. Uh, he put that up in New York. He had kind of had crappy year between Cleveland, Minnesota, and then he kind of came back. He's been 18 points for like three out of the last four years. But what, like, I just don't see him, if Detroit would have been healthy last year, Blake Griffin would have been healthy, Derek Rose wasn't getting 18 points per game. The only reason he got that many points is because he put the ball up. He wasn't shooting very efficiently. He he was driving better than he ever had in his career. Better, better than not than he had in his career, but better than since he did since his injury, his best since his injury. Uh, but his three-point shooting just has not improved. Like, we, I thought that coming in before last year, I thought I would have valued him higher. I thought that he finally kind of went over that hump when it came to shooting. He showed it in Minnesota. He played with a great shooting team. He had all these great pieces around him. But then whenever it came down to that last year, Detroit was essentially Derrick Rose's team. And Derrick Rose in 2021, I don't think he built a team around him. I think he's going to get traded to six man to another team to go back off the bench. He'll still put up a good 15 points per game and be a productive scorer, but he'll get limited in that sense. But he does keep up defensively, which is why he's still able to keep up there. But uh, damn, this is a deep position when Derrick Rhodes is in the top 20. 
Yeah, I mean, I don't think he is going to have much regression. I would say he really regressed last year at all. I mean, if you look at the way he played in Minnesota, he was very much had that still slasher mentality. And he he was a bit better shooting wise, but he wasn't necessarily still great. I mean, he shot 37% from three versus 30. But again, in New York, it's not something where he shot very well from three either. And he was no, like, he shot horrible. Yeah, and he was also still an 18 point per game guy. Like it's been three years in a row when Derrick Rose has been the starting point guard or has gotten at least 26 minutes per game, which has been the last three times. He didn't start much in Minnesota, but he played over 25 per game. But wherever he goes, he's going to play over 25 minutes per game. He's not going to go somewhere where he's not when he's still actually having a, his kind of Derrick Rose resurgence when, again, everyone thought he was done. Um, so I don't think in any regard in terms of skill or anything, he regressed. And I don't think in That's terms of ability. I, don't, I definitely don't think so. Again, if you look at the things that they were doing, the only difference is the fact that in Minnesota, he actually had guys who he who can make use of the things he was doing. Ultimately, though, he was a guy who's fifth at point guard in usage. Like, a guy that we ranked 23rd was fifth in usage. So, yeah, okay. of course, when you get the ball that much, it's going to look like you're doing more things wrong. But, again, there's no one around him who could do anything either. Like, Derek Rose, I think, is skill-wise still one of the better point guards. It's just the fact that there is so many guys who I would say are a bit more two-way um, and who are a bit more, um, a bit less one-dimensional in terms of all they could do for you really is just be that slasher who puts the ball in the net. That's really, I think, all I think Derek Rose is really elite um, in terms of that category. To me, like the fact that he's saying he's the most elite thing is his, him being a slasher, those kind of players just don't last well into their mid-30s. I look at historically for the last 20, 30 years, those kind of players just don't age well and I think that Rose is very very much surprised us but the kind of player that ages well is the kind of player that can shoot well um, so I think that unless he can shoot a little bit better I don't think his slashing is going to last for more than a, another year or two I think it's going to he's going to start going down and still be a fit he's still very talented he'll still score 14 15 this year I think um, but that's kind of where I see him at I think by the end of the year he might fall out of our top 25 just because there's so many deep there's such a deep position so many good, so many good players. I just That's nothing bad against Derrick Rose. I think his production will stay because he's likely to be traded around the deadline. I think Detroit, I think, is going to be a very bad team. He's going to be having, I think, a pretty decent year, and he's going to want to play on a winning team. And they did just draft a point guard as well um, in the first round of the seventh pick. So I don't think they're going to want to, like, they don't want to keep him for the long term because his production would go down. So I do think he's actually going to be traded at the deadline. Um, and that's what's going to allow his production to actually stay um, pretty good. It might even be before the deadline, but I do, don't I think. think if he, I think if he gets traded, his production is going to go down hard. I think another team is going to, it's not going to get the ball as much. His usage is going to go down. It's going, it's, going to be, it's going to be a team whose point guard goes down. They're going to go and get Derrick Rose. I think that's what's going to happen. We'll see. I ho hopefully no injuries, right? But we'll see. Hey, it's bound to happen every year. So I don't think his production will go down in that regard, but still definitely a good player there. And uh, again, we'll, we'll move on from Derrick Rose. But uh, as I mentioned in the last two videos, we had a three-way tie for this position. So the, the player we had just on top of him, on top of Derrick Rose and DeJounte Murray, um, we had Eric Bledsoe. Yes. He, he doesn't do anything wrong. Yeah, I mean, Eric Bledsoe, just like you said, is a guy who doesn't seem to do much wrong, um, but he's not really a guy who ever lived up to the potential either, where I remember um, with the Los Angeles Clippers, a lot of people viewed him and Eric Gordon in the same light, um, and I just felt like Eric Gordon was always just a lot better of a player. Obviously, until very recently, um, Bledsoe has been a bit more in terms of a consistent two-way player, um, but in terms of ever being really an all-star, obviously never happened for Bledsoe, um, and I don't think he's going to go up anytime soon. I think that would be a pretty similar year to last year, um, as long as he continues to be the starting point guard over Lonzo Ball, or at least get close to starting minutes, probably play some shooting guard too. Um, he'll put up at least 15 guard. Yeah, put up at least 15 per game, puts up usually five assists per game, good rebounder for the position, doesn't shoot awfully. Um, you just, as long as you have guys around him, he, he just does a lot better. He's not a guy you want taking the final shot. Um, I don't find he just, in Milwaukee, that's definitely where they struggled um, to have the ball in the hands of either him or Giannis when they're not really pull-up shooters. So they just really need to make sure Brandon Ingram takes that role. For me, blood, the only reason Bledsoe was so low is because of his lack of showing up in the playoffs. Yeah. I, I see Bledsoe in the regular season. and like We keep we look at all these different parts of the Milwaukee Bucks and we go, no, that guy's not that good. That guy's not that good. 
together they're freaking amazing. Bledsoe was essentially the perfect complement in the regular season to Giannis. I know he didn't doesn't shoot the ball that well. They could use a better shooter. Holiday's a bit better on defense. But any given year, I can see him playing, having a better year than Holiday. I just, it's, he just hasn't shown up in the playoffs and hasn't been consistent because they haven't needed him to score, right? They haven't needed him to even run the floor. They just need him to take a, take a every, every other shot. And it's sad to say, but it's going to be the same thing in New Orleans. It's the only reason he's not any higher. He's got the talent to be a little bit higher than this skill, but I just don't see him getting, like you say, getting much, much better production than what he's put up the last couple of years. Yeah, so I mean, a guy who obviously is getting up there in age as well. He is, I believe, um, I want to say 31 or 32 in terms of age now. Um, so obviously in terms of being a bit past his prime, it did happen. did have a couple over 20 point per game years in Phoenix. Um, but he has really digressed in that regard. Like you said, obviously they needed to rely on him less for scoring in Milwaukee. Um, and that's really why he, why he found himself in New Orleans, like you said as well. Um, because he doesn't need to really be um, the guy in any regard. He just needs to be a decent player, and we know that's what he'll be. Um, that just doesn't allow him to move up much on this list. A lot of people even argue um, he should be lower on this list. A lot of people, like you said, guys like DeJounte Murray, um, they might value more because they feel like he could at least have the same offensive production and he's probably um, a better defensive player. Um, but in terms of what we've seen from them so far, I'm still more confident in Bledsoe being a better player this year than him. But I could be wrong on that definitely because he's not a guy who I think is going to have um, He's not going to have a better year than he's had recently, like you said, too. He's in a very similar situation. Don't you find it funny that Milwaukee was too cheap to keep Brogdon? And they they picked Blood so over Brogdon, saying they can only have one. There can only be one. Okay, well, Brogdon was young. You should have went with Brogdon. They had essentially a very, very, very similar year the year before that, like right when Brogdon signed with uh, Indiana. Blood and Brogdon had a very similar year. They were essentially playing the same role to Brogdon shot the ball better and Bledsoe moved the ball better. That was their main difference is Bledsoe's be- a bit better on defense. That's the main difference. Yeah, I mean, if you look at Brogdon now, you could argue he's better at moving the ball. So definitely weird, like you said, weird that they decided to pay one versus the other when the former was a better three-point shooter as well as moves the ball better now. So, But it's, it's, it's just Milwaukee being cheap, right? And uh, doing things like that is one of the reasons why Gian is thinking about leaving. Um, but Moving on from Eric Bledsoe, it's funny how we talk about Bledsoe and Brogdon because our next player on our list is Malcolm Brogdon. Should have kept him in Milwaukee. Yeah, I mean, he's a guy who, again, if you look at his stats, you could even argue he's higher. He should, um, should be higher, yeah. Yeah, he was a guy who put up 16 and 7 last year. Um, and but looking at that alone, um, it obviously seems great. He's a good shooter, too. Um, he was third yeah. on the list in free throw percentage, let alone being a very good three-point shooter. He was um, a d- down year from three last year, but overall very good. Yeah, very reliable. Good. Exactly. Um, to me, it, it, there's a couple reasons, I would say, for me, he just falls a bit low. Um, I guess, historically, I just feel like he's more of a shooting guard. Um, I do feel like Oladipo is going to get traded from that Pacers team. Um, they like Aaron Holiday a lot. He's very, very stingy on defense, where Malcolm Brogdon struggles more, which, is again, is why he's lower for me on this list. Um, he was 64th in steals. He did up under a game. And when you're a point guard, like you, I think you at least need to have the ability to get a steal per game if you want to be an elite guy in this league. So that's what's keeping him outside of, I'd say, the top 20. Um, but again, if he's a shooting guard, then it could be different, where if he still has a great ability to pass the ball, he's pretty tall for the position still, he could shoot very well, um, and then you take some defensive pressure off him too. But right now, because of the lack of defense, I have him as low as we did. Yeah, and that, that was a big thing for me too, was the, the lack of defense and... But in all reality, like we're, you're talking about how he should be better at shooting guard. And typically, I would have agreed with that. And then I looked at him last year. He just he ran that four ideally in there in Indiana. Mm-hmm. Um, he got seven assists per game. The guy never got more than three before that. Yeah. That's a huge jump. Especially, People don't realize how big of a jump that is. Especially for a 28-year-old, right? Like, like, it's not a guy who is uh, in his third year. It's a guy who's played five, six years now, I believe, who randomly found this great ability to move the ball, like you said. Like, he, he got had four assists in his first year, and then he never got higher than three. I know he entered the year a little bit later than most players. Like, he's only his fifth year in the year next year, in the league next year. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, no, it's Brogdon. I, I think that Indiana team's going to look good, and he is probably the oldest player part of that core at this point, him and Oladipo. 
Um, as you as you already mentioned, they're probably going to trade Ole Ole Depot, and it's going to just going to turn into Brogdon's team more and more. I think at the beginning of last year, it was still kind of Ole Depot's team, even though he wasn't playing. He was hurt. Brogdon was brought in to kind of be that complimentary player, and uh, I think he really took advantage of that opportunity, and he doing much better than someone like Bledsoe right now. Much better position. Definitely. And I mean, like I said, too, one of the best free throw shooters in the league, not just this year, but over the last few years. I believe he was 92% two years ago. 92. Yeah. 92 eight, actually. Yeah, 89% last year. Yeah. So that's a guy, too. When you have a team who always makes the playoffs, you know that you're going to have a lot of the time steep in those games, especially in games three, four, whatever, where you're stealing games and foul shots. And Malcolm Brock is a guy who can do that. Um, we know he's not afraid to take big shots either, which is obviously great. Um, I don't mind about the point guard role either. I guess it's more so just because we're used to seeing him at shooting guard. Um, and like I said, I, I I like Aaron Holiday a lot too. But if they could ro- ride him off the bench and oh, maybe make it Marcus Smart situation where Aaron Holiday actually comes to shooting guard and Brogdon is the guy who stays at point guard, that's definitely possible too. So they have a lot of good options there. And overall, um, I hope he can move into the top 20 because he did have such a big jump and we'll just see where he goes from here. That's the big thing, right? It's Let's see where he goes from here. Let's see where he goes from here, because that's uh, um, it could could be doing even better. He's young, but he could be doing even better. You can some players don't hit their prime until they're twenty nine, thirty, thirty one. Joe Ingles is killing it. He's thirty four. Yeah. So he's got a big future ahead of him, Brogdon. So uh, definitely all the power to him to keep just keep on balling. Um, but right on top of Brogdon, this player, I'm actually very surprised that we both had him at a decent level. Um, we have Mike Conley, and I'm just a little perplexed because if we're looking at like statistically the way they played last year, it took Conley a long time to get into the groove. But like 14, four, and three. If you're like statistically, he should be like 29th on our list. But we all know Cole Conley brings in the defensive end. There's a real conversation two years ago, three years ago. Um, if he was a better player than Kyle Lowry. Kyle Lowry is much, much, much higher. He just has to put it back together, and clearly we do both believe he's going to have a bit of a career because the year he had last year wasn't deserving of a top 20 spot, but overall he should be deserving a top 15 spot. Yeah, I think the big adjustment for him was just playing on the new team. Um, when it, he was so used to Memphis really being his team versus going to a team where he's... He was a man. Yeah, exactly. Versus he goes to Utah, and who even knows where his exact man position is, where you have Gobert, you have Mitchell. I mean, on offense, maybe he's the number two, but in terms of overall, he's very overlooked on that team. You almost forget he's there a lot of the time. Um, but like you said, in terms of knowing the type of player Mike Conley really is, um, anyone who watches right. basketball knows that on both ends, he's going to be there every single play. Um, and I do think, like you said, he's going to have a bit of a resurgence here. I'd be very surprised if he doesn't go over the 15 mark, maybe closer oh. to I mean, he had 21 per game the year before in Memphis, and that was after a huge injury, um, sent him back the year before that. So I think he, I think it's a good spot from there. They replaced Rubio for a reason. They know he could still move the ball, even though he didn't do it that great last year. They have English too, like you said, who's arguably the best ball handler at or the best passer at the small forward position. Um, so in terms of what Conley does for them, they're comfortable. He just really needs to be um, more efficient as well. Um, he did have one of the worst field goal percentage of any players with ten or more shots. Um, but again, I don't think he's that's confident. Good. He's yeah. confident taking a shot. Then. I don't blame him because he's had the year, he's had the career. Exactly. I, some years it just doesn't go in the net as much, right? I don't think that I don't think it's going to continue for him. So I think it'll get better in that regard too. Yeah, I don't. I don't see him having a bad year. I don't see us coming back at this and saying this is over ranked. I see us come back and saying this is under ranked. If anything, like the guy is nothing but reliable outside of last year, and it took him a while. Like you're saying, he took him a little while to get in the groove of things and I think that next year that team is one more year com- together they all play that, that Utah team added this offseason like a real actual gonna play minutes Derek Favors Derek Favors might be new to Mike Conley but he's not new to Utah so I, I don't see I, I just see them coming off coming out really hot and actually doing very very well and like Con- Conley had months last year where he was putting up the 20 points per game. He, if he did, if you take out his eight point January, 
he averaged more like 17. Not yeah. that bad. Yeah, not only that too, it's a guy who, very similar to the Kyle Lowry thing, just did nothing wrong, where, like you said, he is a good defensive player, but also um, he had the lowest turnover per game for any players with over 29 minutes per game. Like he, what he does. Exactly. He's not a guy who turns the ball over a lot. Um, of course, you have Mitchell handling the ball a lot of times too, um, but again, he did so a four and a half persist last year, and if you look at the assist to turnover ratio, I believe it's over three. So it's not a guy who, like we said, does a lot of things wrong, and that's why even though, even if the stat line's similar, um, Utah's going to win a lot of games, and he's going to be a reason yeah. why they do win some of those. A, a main reason why, for sure. Absolutely. And I mean, he didn't play that much either last year. To say he can't have a healthier year where he plays 65 and looks better all around, like you said, who knows? That January could have been an injury-riddled month. We don't remember off the top of our heads. Um, it very well he only played happened. seven games, so I wouldn't doubt it. Exactly. So when he, if he avoids the situation like that, he's a bit more consistent in terms of the health. Easily could be a much better year um, in every regard, but I don't think he's going to be worse on defense. He's not going to turn the ball over a bunch still. So he's still going to be the starting point guard on a 50-win in an 80 game season team. Exactly. And yeah, the Western Conference as well. So, yep. And he, he always will be. He's, he's the kind of guy that if you want to compete for a championship, you need a point guard of his caliber or better. Absolutely. Unless you have LeBron James. <laughs> um, so, moving on from Mike Conley. Cut Conley, you're a great player. Keep, keep balling. You're going to go up very, very easily. And this player we have here at 19, and actually, if it wasn't for the last three weeks of the playoffs, there's no way he is on top of Conley, Brogdon, uh, Bledsoe, Rose. Because in the regular season, we have Goran Dragic. Well, Goran Dragic had a good regular season, above maybe maybe about average for his standards. But in the playoffs, he really showed that he, he was the second best player on that Miami Heat team in those playoffs, arguably. Yeah, I mean, not only just last year as well, but he's a guy who's been so consistent too, even before Jimmy Butler got there. Um, you said a comment in our Jimmy Butler video how Butler's the best player Miami's had since LeBron James. Before Jimmy Butler got there, I'd probably go to Goran Dragic, honestly. Yep. Dragic is a very good player in his own right, and a lot of people forget how good he is. Um, but when you actually watch him play, he's the guy who does make magic on the court very, very often. He's a guy who makes a lot of difficult shots. He makes a lot of dead plays turn into something. Um, he knows how to find an active man where you don't think there's anyone open. Um, he's a hustle guy. He plays on both ends very hard. Um, so he's a guy overall who's very underrated, and some people are probably going to see this ranking feel the same. It's just we know in terms of production with all the other guys there and the other guys coming up that they're is good. Exactly, and there's so many other point guards who are just going to have killer years as well that it hurts him in that regard. But in terms of if we just take the word player to a real terms, he's obviously one of the best on the list. We know that. Oh, definitely. Talent-wise, he's got the talent. Um, to, to me, especially in the coming off the bench, he's really turning into that Manu Ginobili role out in Miami. And I love it. It looks amazing for, for Jogic. It, it's perfect for him. Um, it's I'm, I'm not surprised he re-signed. It's just a really great spot for him. And Josh is someone that shown us he can show up in the playoffs. Yep. The last two last two playoffs, he's averaged 19, four and four. Like the guy, he stepped it up, stepped it up when the team needs him to. But as you're gonna notice on that list, that we don't have very many players above the age of 31, 32. He's gonna be 34 next year. I know he's playing in a in a reduced role because he is coming off the bench. And that's why I think it's going to be perfect for him, like similar to like a Ginobili. That being said, it's I, I see him maintaining the spot. I can't see him really gaining any higher because it's just no, there's no minutes of production to go around in the regular season, and they don't need to stress him out. He doesn't need to. He'll he'll come he'll show up in the playoffs when they need him to. No, and that's just it. Like when you look at the stat line, it's hard to hoof him up because he is a guy who feels like you do just want him to kind of take it easy in the season because you really know what he can do in those big games. Yeah. Um, he's a guy who last year he had 16, 5, and 3, um, and yet we still have a ranked so low, um, and that's a great stat line in its own right. I don't think he's going to go down much from that, but I, we don't think he's going to go much. He's not going to go up much either. Yeah. He's not the guy who's the most efficient shooter either. So in terms of what they're going to do in the regular season, I feel like it's a good spot for him. Um, but yes, in terms of when they're going to turn it on in the playoffs, of course we know Gordon's going to be around. He's going to be there. And you know what? If the Heat, for any reason, if they're fighting for a playoff spot, we're probably going to see a couple of big months from Gordon down the stretch as well, too. Oh, definitely. I hope they're not in that position. Um, but as we can tell from last year, they can be a lower seed and still compete in playoffs. Yes. They have the players to show up. 
so it doesn't matter. Just go, just get in the playoffs, and they're going to make noise. Absolutely, that team is very, very deep. So we'll see what they do in the whole James Harden, Harden, James Harden saga. But Gordon Dragic and his own rate definitely top twenty point guards still to this day. Be there either way. Absolutely. Um, moving on from Dragic here at number eighteen, we have Devontae Graham from the Charlotte Hornets. Devontae Graham, you are a amazing rookie. Wow, surprised the shit out of me last year. Yeah, I mean, a guy who, like you said, really came out of nowhere. Um, and if you were to ask anyone who a breakout player was going to be, I doubt anyone would have said Devontae Graham. Um, and every time I would turn on the ticker, I would just see him putting up these numbers. And I, I had no idea who he was. For the longest time, I thought it was a small forward, to be honest. I didn't <laughs> know he was a point guard. Um, it's just a guy who, obviously, in Charlotte, doesn't get a lot of, I would say, media attention. Um, but in terms of being able to put the ball in the net last year, one of the best players, maybe not the most efficient, but one of the most consistent in putting up big numbers night after night, it seemed. Wasn't afraid to take shots. Um, it reminded me a lot in the sense of Trey Young, obviously not as productive, but in terms of just being, hey, you have the ball, take the reins, pull up and shoot, he had no problems with it. He loved it. And he obviously, like you said, thrived in that role too. It, it blows me away that he didn't get more consideration for the most group player. Yeah. Like, I know that Brandon Ingram had a great year and a big jump. This guy went from four, four points per game to 18 points per game, two assists to seven. Like, I know that he got more minutes and his team wasn't that good. Well, they weren't They weren't good the year before either. Mm-hmm. Um, he clearly gained a lot. Like, he put up a bigger number, like a bigger jump than someone like Duncan Robinson went from 3 to 16. This, it was something that I was very surprised about. Like, I knew who he was before last year. But I didn't know who he was. I didn't know he had this potential. Um, I think this is actually may, might be a little bit lo- low ranked, but it just whenever we look at the higher players above him, we just have um, a good 10, 15 guys that have such a proven career. Like it's not that he's that low. Like he's still ahead of Conley. He's still in our top 20. But whenever we're work, working our way up, um, I believe we only have one more rookie. It's being a rookie is hard for us right now. It, he could go up to the 22, 23 points per game and have another big jump, like someone like Pascal Siakam. He had a bigger jump than Pascal, much bigger jump than Pascal. But Pascal did on a winning team. And that's a big thing. It's, it, right now, we can be considered a stat stuffer just by getting the ball so much. So I, I hope that he proved us wrong. I think that team's way, way better, especially with Hayward there now. So I, I hope that he just jumps higher on this list. And that in a couple of years, we just consider him like we consider these other guys that are right now better than him. Yeah, for me, um, I mean, if you look at the wins um, in the 24 games that they won, he did have over 20 points per game. So obviously, when they that's, are that's, winning, that's what he is. Yeah, he's a big factor when they are winning. Um, but for me, it was just really the consistency that made him lower on my list. Um, he's a guy normally, um, when you do look at scoring, of course, it makes you want to put a guy up there. But he was also fourth in three-pointers, uh, three-point attempts. And overall, he was one of the worst field goal percentage players, not just on the list, but at all point guard. He shot under 40% in terms of field goal. So again, it's a guy who had free reign to shoot. He shot a lot. And even though he didn't make a lot of those shots, he put up points. So that's where it really comes down to where we said, is he just a stat stuffer or is he actually going to help them win games? And I think with guys like Gordon Hayward there, that's what we're going to see. Going to help. Yeah. And especially with people like Lamelo, like I can, I can see Graham being up there with him. It'll be really small, him and, and Lamelo. Uh, but Graham's got a really good eye. Like his playmaking is why I had him so high. Yeah, his playmaking blew me away. Yeah, he's a guy who, like we said, because he is such a shooter, we often forget about it. Um, and even alongside Terry Rose, who was supposed to maybe play some point guard in his own right. He oh, he took, played him. Yeah, he took full ball handling control. Um, and like you said, one of the better passers in the league already, it seemed. So hopefully he could continue, continue to be consistent in that regard. And as long as he, he doesn't need to put up more points, he just needs to be uh, more consistent in the shooting. So I think he's a bigger aspect of the team's winning. Exactly, and once may, maybe some of that pressure taken off, off and like we're hinting, I think it's definitely possible for him. All, all, all the power to him. Devontae, don't take it as an insult. There's just a lot of good players in your position. A lot of good. I mean, there's going to be some very good names coming up soon. That if you if you heard, People are going to be pissed off. Yeah, if you were their 14th or 13th on any list, you would be shocked. Um, so so moving, moving up here, uh, moving up from Devontae Graham at number 18 here at number 17. At number 17... A player who is very, very underrated in this league. We have Ricky Rubio. Like, how underrated can this guy get? 
I know that he wasn't the star player in Phoenix, but he almost put up a nine assists per game. Um, he plays really good, great defensively. He shoots the ball decently well. He's kind of like your prototypical what you want in your starting point guard. Yeah, I mean, personally, one of my favorite point guards in the last, I would say, 10 years. Um, I guess the really big thing that a lot of people just nag on him for is that when he did come into the league, he was supposed to be the next big thing. Um, and even though, again, when you actually value the point guard position and you look at it, you know how good Ricky Rubio is. He's never been a, like a Steve Black, Nash level kind of thing. He's never been a game changer. But in terms of any other player who could put up 13 and 10 consistently, be a good shooter and actually yep. have defensive ability, like you said, um, there's not many other guys who could do it. Um, he's obviously, I would say, probably the best passer in the league, at least or at least top three, um, without a doubt. Um, he's a guy year after year is always at the top of the assist leaderboards. He was second again last year for point guards. Um, also tied 10, tied for 10 steals with 1.4. Um, and for a guy who's very small, again, that just goes to how good his IQ is and how good his hands are. Um, and that really just helps him with the passing ability too. Um, he had the best assist percentage um, of anyone on the, on the list. So when he's getting the ball, it, like it's going to be in a, it's likely going to someone else's hand and it's going to convert we know that so he just makes smart basketball plays absolutely just a smart overall player and he does very very little wrong and he's done been so consistent over his career he's so undervalued i think it's because he's played on not winning teams um i know that the, uh, he's had a couple winning seasons sprinkled in there but overall we think of him in phoenix we think of him in minnesota i think he's gonna have a great year this year um, I, but it's, I, I think he's so under, underrated and he, I, I'm Ricky Rubio. Like I say, he is the ideal point guard. He is what any team wants, but because he's so valued, he is someone that most, most teams that really need a Ricky Rubio can't, can't afford a Ricky Rubio. Yeah, I mean, like you said too, his defense very underrated. Um, he was fourth on the he was fourth um, among all point guards in defensive real plus minus. So he's a guy who not only on the offensive end makes a huge difference, but obviously has defense. The, yeah, to stop some of the top point guards in the league. Even though again, um, he is one of the smaller ones, um, and he definitely has the ability to shoot the ball as well. Um, he's not afraid to shoot when he is open. He definitely takes it. Um, but we know he'd rather find the open man. Um, and playing in a team um, where he's going to have the opportunity to do that, that's obviously um, why we have him so high as well. I think he's going to have a career year next year. Like, I know he, he knows Carl Anthony Towns very well. They've played the other in the past. Carl Anthony Towns is a much better player than he was when Ricky Rubio was there. Mm -hmm. And Ricky Rubio is either just as good, if not even better, um, than he was back then. And whenever we're looking back on that old Minnesota team, we're, we look at Ricky Rubio, Zach Levine, uh, Andrew Wiggins, and Carl Anthony Towns. At the time in their careers, Zach Levine and Wiggins, they both were very high on themselves. They both took a lot of shot attempts. They both they weren't very efficient. Neither one of them still to this day is the most efficient in the league. And I just see this team a much better fit for Ricky Rubio in 2020, 2021 than it was in 2016-17. So I, I think he's going to go in there and have a career year. I think he's probably – he's never cracked 10 assists per game. I can see him doing it next year. But that's the kind of scores he's going to have around him with Russell and Towns. That he just – as much as he had Booker and Aiton over in Phoenix and Ubre, they're not efficient scores to the level that Towns is right now where he's one of the most efficient scorers in the whole league. And Russell as well, he's going to be able to light it up as, as he's done the last five, three, four years. But yeah, I, I, I see Ricky Rubio doing very well. Yeah, I mean, think of a version, like you said, the Ricky Rubio, he's obviously in his prime now. He's obviously um, found his efficiency where he was a 10-point-per-game guy in Minnesota before and now up to 13. Um, and with that being said, too, um, he's going to play a lot of pick-and-roll ball with Towns, where, like you said, gives him a great opportunity to put up 10 assists because Towns is such a good three-point shooter from beyond the arc versus, obviously, guys like Gobert um, in eight, and they're not necessarily as strong in that regard. Exactly. So that's really going to allow him to thrive there. Plus, he has guys like Anthony Edwards, who wasn't even mentioned, who you have him passing to the net. So he's definitely going to have a lot of scores on that team to put the ball in the net. You know what? He could even have like a 12 and 12 here. Like that could definitely be possible. And that's why we do have him in the top 20 over some guys who some people might feel are better than him. But we know as a player, Ricky Rubio, one of the smartest guys. There's a guy reason that EuroLeague ball is so competitive and he was one of the best guys over there um, at such a young age. It's because he's so smart and it's going to continue this year too. 
with European players. Like they just have such a great IQ for the game. They yeah. play the game the right way. It seems like we we get away from it a little bit, but they they're very they're very humble and they they just put up their stats. They, they do their job. And I feel like he just likes Minnesota too. Like there's a reason he went back, right? He had a long standing history with them where he was drafted. I think it took him till his third or fourth year to even come over. There was a lot third of third year. Yeah. So and then he came over and he clearly likes it to even consider going back there after all of that. So I he's think been ten, he's been ten and eight since his rookie year. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, so again, to say he couldn't go 12 and 12, but if he has a career, that'd be awesome for him. Yeah, I think that uh, he's one of the best passers in our game today. He's probably the most, he's, he's probably taken over the role, um, potentially from point, from Chris Paul as the most pure point guard in the league. Yeah. Whereas someone like Don Chick or, or LeBron have a bit, bit better assist numbers at this point in their career. Maybe Westbrook puts up a little bit more some years. Um, but when it comes to a pure point guard and what you want on your team, Ricky Rubio is it. Definitely. Um, moving on from Ricky Rubio, who was at number 17 here at number 16 in our top 25 for point guards. We have a guy who Boston fans are going to hate us. <laughs> Kemba Walker coming in at number 16. That's one six for Kemba Walker. Yeah, I mean, as a Boston fan, it hurts, but not only as a Boston fan, it hurts, as a Kemba Walker fan, it hurts, where even I know. one of my favorite players to go by, because he is just <laughs> such a pure winner, um, going back to Con Husty, he's winning that tournament for them, basically, on his own. Um, he's a guy who knows how to do everything in the game of basketball. Um, like Conley, one of the lowest in terms of turnovers for point guards. Um, their big thing for me in terms of having him even outside the top 10, it's just his health. It's just he's not going to start the year. Um, he obviously had some injuries last year um, that are lingering now, and they really stuck with him the whole season. He's going to come back, they're hoping, sometime in January, which I know might not seem that long, but who knows? It could be February. He's still not back um, in it, with a position that's so deep. If you're only playing 40 games, I can't put you ahead of the other guys on here. They're, they're honestly that good, and that's all it came down to for me. Yeah, and his injuries are his knees. Um, he's a player who's played with a lot of explosiveness his whole career. Mm -hmm. He's not exactly the most efficient player, not, not the best shooter in the league, but he's come across and he's been a leader of his team. He's a guy who in his prime can put up 25 points per game easily and do it any given night and be that player that every team needs a star. I read something back in the, about a month after the bubble ended um, from a, it was an article out of uh, one of the Boston newspapers. And it was one of these insiders for the Celtics. It, it didn't make, this article didn't make national news, but it made Boston news. And it was essentially talking about a lingering knee injury in Kemba Walker Kemba, and how Boston was trying to trade Kemba Walker and bring in another point guard. Um, at the time, and all these people, all these Boston fans were like, no, Kemba's a shit. Can't trade him. Can't trade him away. And this person was like, well, he got a lingering injury that it's going to go into next season. It's going to be a major part of his explosiveness. And then two months later, it comes out that he's going to miss time. Injury to me is bigger than what they're saying. Mm -hmm. And even Kemba in Boston last year wasn't wasn't the same Kemba that they that he was in uh, Charlotte. I know that they didn't need him to be because Tatum and Brown's team they really took a big step, a major step, which is amazing for Boston. The fact that you can have Kemba as your third best player, but he's right now, unless you can show us that these injuries don't affect him throughout the season, especially to end the, end the, end the year in, in the playoffs, I just don't see him in the top 10 point guard role as I seen him last year. Even. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's just really purely just a matter of the injuries because even if we look at last season's numbers um he he was still one of the better point guards in terms of overall i mean it's not like his his average his overall production he's never been a guy who's put up more than i think over 22 and a half per game um so it's at 25 and a half from the year before so yeah sorry so he had the one year of that but before that he was more like a 22 23 for his career 19.9 yeah. guy obviously factoring rookie seasons and such um but with that he was still eighth in points for point guards he had 20.84 which is an off for him he had 4.8 assists but that stays a bit down um but he was still tied for fifth in blocks among point guards and like i said he had the least amount of turnovers for actually any point guard who played more than 30 minutes um conley actually played 29 so he just missed that regard um and he also was the um he had the least amount of personal 
potential fouls for any starter as well for point guard. So he's a very, very disciplined player. Um, third best turnover ratio for starters, 38% from three. Doesn't do a lot wrong. I just feel like, like I said, um, it is the injuries. And like you said too, a fact of he is the third guy there. I wouldn't be shocked if we see a year where Kimber Walker, like I said, maybe only plays in 40 games or so. And he only puts up like 18-5 and whatever his rebounds are. As long as he's healthy by the playoffs, that's all they really need him for. Exactly. Yeah. So that's just why his ranking falls in this year's list. We know how good of a player he can be, but I agree that the injuries are a major cause for concern. And that's why even myself as a Celtics and Kemba Walker fan, I, I just couldn't put him ahead of some of the guys here, as hard as there is to say. Bean Town, come fight us. Uh, well, we, we agree he's still a great player, but he's there's just really a lot of really good players that have made the jump in recent years. And... Like last year, we're two of our top ten, two of our top ten players didn't even play. Three of our top ten players didn't even play last year because of injuries. Yeah. So they're back now, and other players in the meantime have gotten even better. Um, that's the only reason Kemba doesn't make it. Not that he's a bad player. I think he'll still stay in the top twenty for the rest of his career. Um, but I just don't see him putting up that twenty-five points per game again. And that's really what it takes to, if unless you're going to be an all-star on defense. Um, it's you need to put up more than just 20 points per game to crack our top 50. Definitely. Um, it's funny how we say that because the next guy never scored 20 points per game. Uh, but here at number 15, at number 15, we're just on top of Kemba Walker. We have the future, a young rookie, sophomore year he's going to come up, rookie of the year, John Morant, Memphis Grizzlies. He killing it, Jaw. Damn, I only knew one got Jaw before that. He's way better than Jaw Rule. <laughs> yeah, I mean, different and better in different regards. But Jaw Morant, um, a guy who coming out of college, a lot of people had high hopes for, but they didn't know if he was for sure. Obviously, going to be a rookie of the year. It was a pretty decent class, but it did seem like a guy who was really only going to be competitive in terms of being a scorer. Um, but he really helped that Memphis team become a lot better of a team than they were. Yep. Um, he was exactly what they needed. Um, and I don't feel like in any regard, he's a guy who's going to have a decline. Um, his 7.3 assists last year were definitely a pleasant surprise to go along with his point production. Um, and the super discipline too, as a rookie to be 54th in personal fouls for point guards, I think that's a huge stat because a lot of the times um, you, you have to adjust to the speed of the NBA level. And he's a guy who already felt like he understood the game at this level. So that's why I think he's a guy who maybe unlike some of the other rookies who have sophomore slums, I'm confident that he's going to have a um, above average year compared to even last year. I, I can't, agree with, can't agree with you more. Uh, I think a lot of people are sleeping on Memphis. Uh, he's the type of guy who comes in and he made everyone around him better. That team was, was essentially the same team as they were the year before. Yeah. Um, whenever they got rid of, heck, they started that year the year before with a very functioning Gasol and Conley. And next thing you know, the we're starting the next year. We have a rookie coming in. They traded away their two best players. They got rid of their two best players in the last ten years. And he comes in and doesn't just doesn't just do put up Mike numbers. He beats essentially a career year by Mike Conley. So it's I, I think it's very very good for Memphis. Um, they're on the rise right now. It, he's the type of guy that, again that makes everyone around him better. He's just going to keep doing that. Him, Jaron Jackson Jr., there's a future of that Memphis team. And uh, I, I only see him rising in this list. A lot of the players on top of him uh, are very proven vets that are going into later stages of, of their careers. And John Morant, we have no idea how good he can be. Literally no idea. He can be real, that good. Yeah, and I mean, a guy who... Um two as a score, he was near the top of the point guard list in terms of field goal percentage. Um, anytime a rookie can come in and they can not only hit shots, but do it at an efficient rate, I think that stands out a lot. Um, Handle the ball, not, no turnovers. Exactly. He's a guy who his size doesn't necessarily affect his game either. He's not af afraid to get down low. We know he's not afraid to take big shots, but like you said too, a point that a lot of people not don't even consider, and even before making lists, you don't consider it myself either. Um, that Memphis team had guys like Mike Conley and um, Mark Basol two years. Part of the season. 
Yeah, yeah. they didn't end up making the playoffs by the end of that year. They were a way worse team that year, and they had essentially the same players around them. Yeah, and then they get Jay Morant, and they come in there, and they're a playoff team again. So yeah. that obviously st sticks to the fact that this guy had a huge contribution, not just in terms of being able to get other people involved and putting the ball in the net, but in terms of actually making it matter and actually performing mm -hmm. Um, in the games that matter, and that's why um, I think we're both confident that Memphis is going to move forward in a good position. Um, yeah. And I'm excited to see where they go because between himself, Dylan Brooks, JB, Jared Jackson, Justice Winslow, Brandon Clark, they're just they're a super deep team, and they're a guy a team who I feel like I wouldn't be surprised if they even squeak in as like a six seed or seven seed. Um, and a lot of people are going to be surprised, but we're not because we know how good these young guys already are. Exactly. Um, if anything, the Western Conference is not as top heavy that once was. There's very little teams that actually have the big stars anymore. They usually, most of them have two players. And Jackson Jr. and John Morant can turn into those two players from Memphis. And around them, they have other players that are very, very capable as well. Kyle Anderson, definitely. Um, so, like, they're not not a bad team, right? They're, they're, they have a bright future ahead of them. I definitely see very bright things for, for John Morant. I see him jumping a lot a lot of these people in the top 15. I think people are going to look at this and go, is he really a top 15? And But just watch him play this year. Watch Memphis. They're on the rise. They will be a playoff team next year. I just, I, I have, Alex, how much do you weigh right now? <laughs> Me? Yeah. Well, 180. Jay, John Morant is 175. John Morant is 174 pounds. <laughs> And, and five foot seven, as I like to say, and the girlfriend says five foot six and a half. Yeah, so he's six three, one seventy. So obviously, a guy who isn't necessarily the strongest guy, like we said, but as a rookie, still finds his ability to score, which is just amazing in um, in its own right. So I can't wait to see even as he develops more just into his body, truly what this guy's gonna become. I'm confident he's gonna be a uh, twenty five six and whatever it is type of guy, definitely. And uh, for our fans out there. Don't I look good for like 135? <laughs> like I'm only 5'7. Come on, now I got no gut. 135? I heard 175. 175, that's what I mean. Oh. Don't I look good for 135? <laughs> gotta, gotta have that weight and still be able to move around. <laughs> nimble, nimble. Jake Paul, <laughs> Jake Paul, if you're looking. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll take him. I'll go in the ring at least. Uh, so, move, move it.